You walk into a store and three identical white boxes promise to clean your air, but one might actually make your breathing worse. Some say HEPA, some say ionizer, some say carbon. Yet most people grab whichever costs less and hope for the best. Today, I'll explain HEPA filters, ionizers, and carbon purifiers like you're five years old. By the end, you'll know exactly which technology matches your actual problem and how to avoid wasting money on the wrong type. Most people think air purifiers all do the same job. Just cleaning the air, right? But that's like saying all shoes are the same, because they all go on your feet. A running shoe won't help you at a wedding. Dress shoes won't help you run a marathon. Air purifiers work the exact same way. Each technology solves a specific problem. If you don't match the tech to your actual need, you're basically paying hundreds of dollars for a machine that's fighting the wrong battle. Let's start with HEPA filters, because they're the gold standard most doctors recommend. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air. Sounds fancy, but the idea is simple. A HEPA filter is a dense maze of tiny fibers packed together so tightly that particles can't squeeze through. When air flows into the purifier, dust, pollen, pet dander, mold spores, and smoke particles get physically trapped inside the filter. They stick to the fibers like lint on Velcro. The clean air flows out the other side. That's it. No electricity zapping particles, no chemicals. Just a physical barrier catching stuff. Here's why HEPA matters to you. If you have allergies, asthma, or pets, HEPA filters remove the actual particles floating in your air that trigger symptoms. Pollen grains are about 10 to 100 microns wide. Pet dander is around 2.5 microns. Smoke particles are even smaller, down to 0.1 microns. A true HEPA filter captures 99.97% of particles as small as 0.3 microns. That means it's grabbing almost everything that makes you sneeze, cough, or wheeze. If you wake up stuffy every morning, if your eyes itch around your cat, if wildfire smoke season turns your house into a haze, HEPA is your answer. In fact, during California's 2020 wildfire season, hospitals saw 30% fewer asthma emergencies in neighborhoods where HEPA purifier use was highest. That's not coincidence. That's particles getting trapped before they reach your lungs. But here's what HEPA doesn't do. And this surprises most people. It doesn't remove smells. At all. Because odors aren't solid particles you can trap. They're volatile organic compounds, tiny gas molecules that slip right through HEPA fibers like air through a chain link fence. So if your house smells like last night's fish tacos or your neighbor's cigarette smoke is seeping through the walls, a HEPA filter won't help. You need something else entirely. That's where carbon filters come in. And the science here gets interesting. Carbon filters are made from activated charcoal, which is basically carbon that's been treated to become insanely porous. Imagine a sponge. But at the molecular level, one gram of activated carbon has a surface area the size of a football field, all folded up into a tiny space. When air passes through, gas molecules stick to the carbon surface through a process called adsorption. Not absorption like a paper towel soaking up water. Adsorption means the molecules cling to the surface. The carbon holds onto them, and the clean air moves on. This matters if you're dealing with odors, cooking smells, cigarette smoke, or chemical fumes. Traffic pollution near a highway releases nitrogen dioxide and volatile organic compounds. New furniture off-gasses formaldehyde. Paint releases fumes for weeks. Cleaning products leave residues in the air. Carbon filters grab all of that. But here's the catch nobody tells you. Carbon filters do almost nothing for particles. If you have allergies to pollen, a carbon filter won't help at all. It's solving a completely different problem. That's why many good air purifiers combine HEPA and carbon together. HEPA catches the particles. Carbon catches the gases. Together, they handle both problems. Think of it like this. HEPA is your bouncer keeping troublemakers out. Carbon is your janitor cleaning up the mess that's already inside. Now let's talk about ionizers, because this is where things get controversial. Ionizers don't use filters at all. Instead, they release negatively charged ions into the air. These ions attach to dust, pollen, and smoke particles floating around your room. Once a particle gets charged, it's attracted to surfaces like walls, floors, and furniture. Basically, the particles get heavy and fall out of the air. Some ionizers also have a collection plate inside that attracts the charged particles like a magnet. Here's the thing nobody wants to hear. Ionizers can work. Studies show they do reduce airborne particles. But there's a problem some people really hate. Many ionizers produce ozone as a byproduct. Ozone is a gas made of three oxygen atoms. 
At high altitudes, it protects us from UV radiation, but at ground level, ozone irritates your lungs. It can trigger asthma, cause chest pain, and make breathing harder. The EPA says ozone is harmful even at low levels. Some ionizers are designed to produce almost no ozone. Others produce a lot. The box won't always tell you which type you're buying. And here's what makes this worse. Ozone doesn't just irritate your lungs today. Chronic exposure can cause permanent lung damage over time. You might be trying to fix your allergies while slowly damaging the organ you're trying to protect. And here's the other issue with ionizers that manufacturers avoid mentioning. Even if an ionizer removes particles from the air, those particles don't disappear. They're now stuck to your walls and couch and carpet. You didn't actually remove them from your home. You just moved them. When you walk across the room or sit on the sofa, you kick them back up into the air. So ionizers can reduce airborne particles temporarily, but they're not eliminating the problem the way HEPA does. This matters to you because ionizers are often the cheapest option on the shelf. They're marketed as high-tech and filter-free. No replacement filters means no ongoing costs. That sounds great until you realize you might be breathing ozone and the particles are just hiding on your furniture. If you have asthma or lung sensitivity, most doctors recommend avoiding ionizers entirely. They're just not worth the risk. So here's how to actually choose, and this decision tree will save you money. If you have allergies, asthma, pets, or you're dealing with wildfire smoke, buy a HEPA filter, period. It's the only technology that physically removes particles from your air and traps them permanently. If you're also dealing with odors or chemical smells, get a purifier that combines HEPA with a carbon filter. That covers both particle and gas removal. If you're in a city near traffic or your home has new furniture off-gassing chemicals, the carbon layer becomes critical. Skip ionizers unless you've confirmed the model produces near-zero ozone and you understand the particles are just falling onto surfaces. For most people, ionizers aren't the right choice. They're cheaper up front, but they don't solve the root problem, and they carry risks HEPA doesn't. One more thing nobody mentions at the store. HEPA filters need replacement every 6 to 12 months, depending on use. Carbon filters need replacement too, usually at the same time. That's an ongoing cost. But it's also proof the system is working. If particles and gases are getting trapped, the filter fills up. Ionizers don't have that cost, but they also don't have that proof. You're trusting the particles fell down and the ozone stayed low. Check the filter replacement cost before you buy. Some purifiers cost $150, but filters cost $80 every six months. Over three years, you'll spend more on filters than the machine. Other brands cost more up front, but use cheaper filters. Do the math for your timeline. To recap, HEPA filters physically trap particles like pollen, pet dander, and smoke. Carbon filters absorb odors and chemical gases. Ionizers charge particles to make them fall out of the air, but can produce ozone and don't actually remove anything. Most people need HEPA. Many people benefit from HEPA plus carbon. Almost nobody needs an ionizer as their primary system. So here's what I want to know. If you found out your current air purifier was just moving particles around instead of removing them, would you return it tomorrow or keep using it because you already spent the money?